Hello there, this is Vivi Cameron. Welcome to a new video. Today, I'm going to share two easy techniques to create a focal point on your backgrounds using stencils and stamps. And I'm also going to be showing how to add a beautiful tone on tone effect to these projects. So I'm going to be using this hard mask by Simon Says Stamp. They are layered and they come in a package of eight. So you can use this in many different ways. For the first technique, I'm going to combine those masks with this stencil here that is called Peony and Lips, also by Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to be working directly on the car base. So this is my car base, and I'm going to use a piece of cardstock folded like so or like that to avoid transferring ink to other areas of the car base while I'm doing the stenciling. Now I'm going to place the mask over the stencil. You can align it with the edge if you want. It's not necessary. And I'm going to use the best ever craft tape by Spellbinders to hold it in place. I'm going to get rid of any dust or fibers over the paper. And then I'm going to start applying inks. So I'm using here Simon Says Stamp inks and blending brushes and I'm going to apply this yellow ink around the edges of that shape like so. And I'm not doing any pressure on the brush, I'm just adding a hint of color around the edges of that shape to transfer that stenciled image. Okay, now I'm going to place this stencil over the mask just like that and I'm going to keep it in place using the best ever craft tape and I'm going to add this pink ink color and I'm using here a small brush and I'm trying to add that ink in the center of those florals and now I'm going to use a more intense ink color and I'm going to apply it around the edges of the flowers just like that and again I have to say that don't worry about perfection here or to go out of the lines it doesn't matter you can also use a small brush to try to be more precise if you want to, and that could be very helpful. But after using this small brush, you might need to use the larger brush just to try to even the color a little bit more. Now to add vibrancy to this image, I'm going to apply ink around the edges of these flowers. Now I'm going to use this green ink to try to reveal those little leaves that are in the stencil. And for that, I'm using a very, very small Nuvo blending brush. Okay, next I'm going to use this Black Suit Distress ink. Don't be scared to use this ink on your projects. This is a translucent ink and when you apply it over anything you will be able to still see the color underneath but it's going to add that beautiful shadowing and that beautiful effect. So if you see there even when I'm adding this like crazy over those white areas in the stencil image I didn't cover the whole image with the ink and if I want to I can just go back with some of those ink colors that I just applied to rescue the color on those areas where the black suit ink could be too dark. So that's what I'm doing here, you can see there. And this also adds a really nice finishing to the project. So I'm using here these ink colors. I was testing the waters, but you can use any ink color you might have. Now I'm going to spray a little bit of water. I'm going to place the bottle really far from the paper and immediately I'm going to dry this using kitchen paper. Now I'm going to remove the stencil and the mask to reveal that stenciled image. So there you go. This is a very easy technique. So now I'm going to show you a second technique and this is to stamp through the mask. To do this, you can use large stamps, small stamps, any kind of stamp. You need to be aware that this stamp might stick to your mask. So you have to place the stamp first and then remove the mask and put the mask in place again. Be in mind that as this can stick to the mask, 
You just need to do a lot of pressure on the stamp to try to transfer that image in one go, just in case, and to avoid ruining your carpet. Okay, the next thing I have to do is to clean this mask. I'm using here a baby wipe, but it wasn't enough, so I sprayed Surgical Spirit, that is a solution I use to blend alcohol inks, and this is supposed to be the same that ruin alcohol, but when I buy pure ruin alcohol, it doesn't work the same. So anyways, I'm loving it to clean my craft supplies. I also love this kind of mask because they are endurable, I can just clean them and they are ready to go all the time and they are very thin so that I can stamp through them or stencil through them with no problem. Now with the clean mask on, I'm going to start applying ink around the edges of this shape and I'm using this pink brush that has some ink from the previous project, so I'm not re-inking the brush. Now I'm going to apply yellow ink over these flowers here and I'm using a large blending brush as you can see there. I'm using the same ink colors that I used for the previous project and I'm applying here magnolia ink just around these petals in this flower there. I'm going to add yellow ink in the center of the flower and in the center of this one here and then I'm going to use this red ink to add vibrancy. Okay, next I'm going to use this light green color over those areas in which I can spot leaves, but you know, it doesn't have to be precise. Nothing I'm doing here is precise. And then I'm using a darker green color to go over those areas just to intensify the color. Once the ink dries and it settles a little bit in the paper, I can repeat the coloring so that I achieve more intense colors. That is always what I like to. So I added more yellow color over those yellow flowers. And now I'm going to use this purple ink over the other flower and these little flowers here. I thought this purple ink color could be enough to add shadowing around the stenciled image, but it wasn't enough, so I'm using here Black Suit Distress Ink, as I did in the previous sample as well. So I'm using here a blending brush, and I'm applying that Black Suit Ink all around the edges of this, and that makes a difference. And something very important to let you know here is that I don't clean the mask while I'm doing the ink blending, I only clean it after. So there you go. This is another idea to use your mask and stamps to create focal points on your card backgrounds. So you can add a large sentiment or a banner over this. You can also add embellishments as I'm doing here, or you can also do something else. So I added a branch, also a big birthday sentiment and a little die cut bird that I color using the same ink colors that I use for the background to create that tone on tone composition. Now let me show you how I made that little bird using this die set here that we cut in one go all the pieces we need to do this. And then I'm going to die cut this twice. So you will see that I have two pieces of each one. I'm not going to be using the legs, so I'm going to put those apart and I'm going to glue two of the same pieces together or I'm going to stack them up. This will give more stability to the paper and it's going to make the die cut to look a lot more sturdy. So I like to add glue over one of the pieces, allow it to dry a little bit and then place the other one on top just like that. And I'm going to use the same ink colors again on these little die cuts just to completely transform that paper. And if you want to do this, regardless the ink color you are using, I want you to apply ink in one end of the die cut, a little bit in the center and a little bit in the other end. And when the die cuts are small, just add ink in one of the sides. And as you see there, I'm applying very little ink. Then I'm going to use this other ink here on those areas where I didn't apply ink before. And again, it's just a hint of color, but as this magnolia ink is very intense, 
It looks like a lot, but it's just a little bit. You can overlap the colors a little bit, and listen to me, a little bit, but don't cover the whole color that you previously applied. That's key. So once you finish applying this second ink color, I'm going to add vibrancy by using this red ink over those areas I apply the pink ink, just overlapping the ink just like that, and blending those ink colors. So it's not red, it's not pink, it's something in between, and it's really nice. And now I'm going to add black suit distress ink around the edges to cover those white edges, and also to add a kind of outline so you can see the shape or the die cut shape a lot better. And this very simple step make a big difference in the final result. And another thing that is super duper important and I didn't mention before, and please listen to me, do not cover the whole die cuts with ink. If you see there, you can see white areas on those die cuts and that's what it makes all the magic. So as you saw there, I glue all the pieces together, but to adhere the wind, I'm going to use a dimensional foam pad and I'm also going to add a little bit more of color here and there because as the inks dry, they look more opaque and I really want vibrant colors. So the last thing I did also was gluing the beak of this little bird and I'm also going to use a white and a black pen to add accents and details to these little die cuts. This is totally optional, but these are things I like to do and I want to share with you. Another thing I do is the eye of these kind of creatures. So what I do is to add a black nouveau drop and then I shape it using a piece of paper. I make a mess when I'm doing that, but I really think that the little eye looks super cute. And then I'm going to apply this gold glitter gel on the die cut like so, just to add a little bit of sparkle. Once this is all dry, I also like to add Nubo Crystal Grays on the eye to make it look more glossy. And you can make this in many different colors. To make this one, I use these tres inks and to make that slim line card that is also in my blog, I also use peony and leaves stencil and the same embellishments, but just in a different color. So I just wanted to show you that as well in this video. So these little birds are super cute and you can use them in different projects. That's what I thought about using them in coordinating colors to that background. And I also use other dyes in my stash to finish this project like this die set here, but I only use the branch to die cut that shape to be able to sit the little bird on something. You can also add a banner underneath the bird if you don't have a branch, but I was just experimenting and I was trying to create a little scene within that heart. So I decided to die cut a black and a white branch just to add some contrast there and I also decided to embellish with these pearls. These are absolutely gorgeous and they are also listed in the video description. So I'm using here the panel that has been made using stencils only. And all you have to do here is to add a sentiment. It could be a banner, a stamped sentiment, a hot foil sentiment or a die cut. And I have here the exact same card design, but for this one I use a larger hard mask and I also use lighter ink colors. Next, I'm going to add shimmer on the bird. I just refill a Nuvo shimmer pen with spell binders, sparkle silk, and the shine is amazing. And this is a hack that I really wanted to share with you today because my DIY shimmer pen has never been so shimmery. I love it. Okay, I use the same card design, also using the panel I stamp through the mask. I added a bold birthday 
die cut sentiment in a little hot foil banner. You can see all the shimmer and how this is looking there. And to finish the other card that I made only using stencils, I just stamp a small sentiment as you can see there. So there you go, we are done. And these cards are part of a Simon Says stamp blog hop and giveaways on my blog today. The links are in the video description or just search on Google BB Cameron cards and you will find my blog straight away. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.